Thank you very much for the opportunity to, to speak here and uh, uh, talk about robotic cholecystectomy. So these are my disclosures, none of which are, are pertinent to my talk here. So, you know, this is an interesting topic, I think, but I, I want to be a little more far-reaching than simply talking about robotic uh, cholecystectomy. So I will talk about outcomes, some data of, of laparoscopy versus robotics. But I think in general, especially in this session, with the rise of robotics and general surgery, uh, robotic cholecystectomy can be a primer for more complex robotic procedures and maybe a good place to start. And I'll review some of the, uh, the ways in which that's done and, and some of the experiences of others. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to talk about some technologies that are specific to cholecystectomy but make robotic approaches uh, more unique. So robotic cholecystectomy is, is often one of the first procedures uh, in the learning curve that, that surgeons will perform. And the first da Vinci robotic cholecystectomy was actually performed in 1997 uh, by Hempens. And uh, you know, the expectation that the robotic advantages, which we've seen in the previous talks, um, may be more evident in more complex procedures, but what really is the role of robotics in uh, gallbladder surgery? So I think we have to even step back a bit more, and this is a communication to uh, Lancet in 1994 from uh, Gagné and Pomp, uh, describing their experience with a uh, robotic arm, basically a, a camera driver, and a handful of patients uh, to perform cholecystectomy. So it's, it's not new or novel, but how have, changed, how, how have things changed since then? And really, where are we today with robotics and gallbladder removal? So what are the outcomes and data? Kind of before we get to that, just a quick setup. I'm not going to talk about too many technical details because it's relatively straightforward how this is done. Uh, the robotic cart is brought in over the patient's right shoulder, uh, and uh, typically the patient is paced in, in some degree of reverse Trendelenburg prior to docking, and the conduct of the operation should be the same as a standard laparoscopic operation. So how about outcomes? So there are many kind of case series and some database studies which demonstrate similar efficacy to laparoscopy. Uh, and one of the better constructed studies by Breitenstein in a case match control study, not unsurprisingly, there was no difference in time of, of performance of the operation, conversion rate, length of stay, or overall morbidity. And also not surprisingly for robotic cholecystectomy, there's a higher cost from amortization and consumables. Kind of further analysis of, of some of the studies for inclusion was uh, evaluated in a Cochrane review of four trials of 400 patients. And for standard clinical outcomes, really no difference of laparoscopy versus robotics. So really, this is a fairly controversial topic. Um, robotic cholecystectomy in these studies uh, is more time consuming. And part of that probably is a learning curve. So it's kind of hard to, to vet out those metrics per se. It is more costly, and, and, and that's a, uh, a challenging conversation to have because there's different ways to look at that in terms of direct and indirect costs. But we do know that revenue generated for a robotic cholecystectomy is not different than a laparoscopic cholecystectomy. So we have to really, I think, keep that uh, as, as part of the conversation. But I'm not going to dive too deeply into that. But fundamentally, equal outcomes for gallbladder removal. So. Having said that, what is the role for robotic cholecystectomy? And I think in many ways, it's a wonderful training platform uh, as an entree to start to do more complex robotic surgeries, which you've seen. So clearly, robotics is, is rapidly growing in, in general surgery. Um, and we've seen great examples of that here. But the reality is that the formal residency training program uh, for our next generations of surgeons are, are relatively limited. Uh, there are some MIS fellowships that have broad exposure to robotics, but most have some or none at all. And the reality is that most surgeons develop their robotic skills after training in, in a, a spectrum of different ways. So what does that look like? Well, cholecystectomy is a common operation. We all do it well. There's well-established ways to do it safely. There are standardized steps to ensure safety. Uh, and how is that applied to robotic cholecystectomy? Uh, it may seem a bit reductionist, but if you kind of step back and think of the steps of laparoscopic cholecystectomy and robotics, a lot of those maneuvers and setup are equatable to other more complex operations, such as vessel dissection, division, application of clips, and specimen removal. 
And in an operation that doesn't take a tremendous amount of time, there may be more leeway to a, a learning curve. And the reality is that even in the, the earliest part of one's learning curve, a robotic cholecystectomy averages in this group uh, an hour or two, which is, is probably reasonable in, in that uh, early phase of, of learning robotics. So, we often think of learning curves and the technical conduct of the operation and so forth, but when you're starting a, a robotic surgery program, that's just part of the component of becoming more facile and efficient. So there's a technical component, but the OR team uh, can learn with these shorter cases in terms of prep and conduct of the operation uh, and, and management of the equipment. So, and there's some data out there. Uh, this is um, a couple of studies looking at an initial experience and in skin incision to docking, kind of that nebulous time away from the technical conduct. That can be decreased significantly from 30 to 18 minutes over 46 cases. But really, the consult time is relatively same. So uh, the conduct of the operation is the same, but training the team to become more efficient is critically important to growing and starting a robotic surgery program. So getting started with, with robotics and general surgery, uh, there's, there's a paucity, but some literature out there. This is a small study looking at a case match lab versus robotics. The goal was to really evaluate safety and learning curves. Not surprisingly, there are longer case times, but it decreased very quickly, even after the first three cases. The conclusion is that probably increased time didn't justify routine use for cholecystectomy, but this group then went on uh, and started performing more complex biliary pancreatic GE junctional and colon operations, which is a good segue, I think, for uh, learning this technology. So how do we translate this to our residents and fellows? There's no nationally standardized program. There's a SAGES consensus uh, that promotes a structured program, but there's no specific curriculum. There aren't any number of first assist cases or, or console cases determined, but there are unique opportunities for training and simulation uh, in a teaching console experience. So this is a web-based study of ACGME uh, residency programs that had a robotics program. And what you'll see is that a majority of our trainees are either observing or assisting, uh, not necessarily at the console, only 18% in this web-based survey. So, what are the opportunities there? So this is a study from Penn State uh, developing an institutional training program. So kind of a trainee-directed program of online modules, literature review and simulation, but then eventually transitioning to the bedside, first assist, and operative console. So this group looked at uh, 10 cases as, as first assist, and in the end, their residents, about 65% had completed as an operator robotic case by the time they finished their general surgery residency. So interesting paradigm, I think a good opportunity for robotic cholecystectomy. I want to change gears just a little bit and talk about some new technologies that are unique uh, to cholecystectomy and make robotic cholecystectomy different than laparoscopy. So single site robotic surgery uh, can be, I think, technically more efficient with the aid of robotics, uh, allowing you to work in a, a, a tight, um, uh, confined space with limited external clashing uh, and maybe a more ergonomic operation. We did some of the first cases using the uh, single site platform in Cleveland. Um, metrics looked pretty standard. We had good outcomes, and over time, uh, that, that time decreased as we figured out how to do these operations efficiently. You know, the role of single site surgery overall, regardless of whether it's robotic or laparoscopic, um, is, is interesting and, and should be talked about and, and debated. Uh, I, I think this is a, an important study looking at uh, outcomes between single-site robotics and multi-trocar uh, laparoscopy. So single center, single surgeon, um, again, single-site robotics versus standard lap. Almost 700 cases, two-thirds of them were single-site robotic. Clear selection bias, the laparoscopy had higher BMIs and, and more previous surgery. Same times uh, for operation overall, shorter length of stay for the single site robotic, but that's probably selection bias because the tougher cases were being done laparoscopically. But interestingly, importantly, in this group, there were, there were more hernias and more wound infections in that, that single site group. So it may give us pause, uh, depending on whether this is the right operation for individual patients. And um, this is a consensus statement from EAES saying that robotic single-site cholecystectomy may potentially overcome some of the technical limitations of, of single-site surgery, kind of standard uh, straight laparoscopy, but clearly uh, additional dedicated training and education are necessary uh, to, to perform this safely and successfully. So one other area I want to talk about um, 
which was mentioned earlier, is enhanced imaging and how that can be easily um, performed simultaneously in real time with a robotic platform. So uh, clearly, cholecystectomy um, is a common procedure, is standardized, and, and, and uh, SAGES as an organization has made a, a, a sincere and, and fruitful effort to improve quality and outcomes. And this should clearly be applied to robotics as well. And the unique opportunity uh, with a robotic platform is, is with uh, ICG imaging. This is a dye that binds to, to proteins in the blood. It, it rapidly circulates. It's eliminated by the liver and the biliary tree. Uh, and real-time imaging can allow you to get some uh, views of what the extrahepatic biliary system looks like. It's easy to do, relatively straightforward, and can give you additional crucial information during this operation. So here's a quick video of what this looks like in real time. And Clearly, it depends on the degree of inflammation, the fat surrounding the anatomy, but it can also be a, a, a helpful adjunct to identifying anatomy. And there's some data that say that even before dissection, the cystic duct can be visualized uh, with this technology the vast majority of times, but the common bile duct and the common hepatic duct can be seen as well uh, to give an additional uh, level of safety and identification of structures. I don't think it replaces cholangiography, but is a tool that is easily um, uh, implemented in a robotic platform can obviously be helpful, and I think that this video demonstrates that quite well. So in conclusion, robotic cholecystectomy is a common application. Um, it may be helpful early uh, when transitioning to robotics uh, and maybe a, a good opportunity for a training paradigm, both for new surgeons to robotic platforms, but also for our trainees. And new and different technologies, including ICG imaging uh, and single site, uh, may be uh, more easily accomplished by robotic uh, platforms. Thank you very much.